Hey, it's Ranger Russ back at the Meg's Point Nature Center. I have another episode of my favorite animal and this is really going to be a special animal today. Before we do that, we have to do all of our reminders. Don't touch your face, wash your hands, warm soap and water at least two minutes, keep your social distances, cough into your elbow. All of those things are very important. I have to remind people when you're out in the park, social distancing is still important. Even though you're in the outdoors, you need to keep six feet. A good way for you to remember that, you need to keep an eagle's distance away from people that aren't in your same household. If you live with people, you don't have to keep that distance. But if you don't live with them, six feet. It's the wingspan of an eagle. Actually, they're a little bit more than that sometimes. And it's about two and a half possums. So if you measure out, let's just say three possums distant away from each other, that'll be a good way to keep your social distance. Just tell people, I need to keep three possums away from you. I like that one. Okay. If you want more information about our programs, go to megspointnaturecenter.org. Now, yesterday we had some questions about how to contact us. Uh, there's, it's a messaging ability on our website. Go to the Contact Us link. Uh, there would be a form to fill out. You just fill that out with your email address and your question, and then we can respond to you as soon as we can. We're getting a lot of questions and I'm trying to answer them all, so it doesn't hurt to repeat it. If you think I missed it, please send it to us again and we'll make sure to answer your questions. Yesterday on the Rocky Shore, we talked about amphipods and isopods. And I think I did get it right, but we're gonna be putting this up on the website, maybe this or something like it. Um, but this little thing tells you the difference between an amphipod and an isopod, which is really important to know. So isopods are the pill bugs or sow bugs that you find under a log near your homes. When they lay in your hands, they will lay either on their belly or on their back with their legs straight up. An amphipod lays on its side, so the legs will be off to the side, either one side or the other. So that's a really easy way to tell the difference between an amphipod and an isopod. What we were finding out on the rocky shore were amphipods, which are not the same as the sow bugs or pill bugs that are found under logs. We do sometimes, though, find isopods out, especially when we run our seine net, we get little green isopods in our seine net. So we're going to be running the seine net sometime soon, and hopefully we'll catch some isopods, and I can show you at that time. Now, today's animal, I already said it's really special. It's a, an amazing animal, okay? You think Spider-Man is cool? This frog is even better. This is the gray tree frog. Now, they, have, uh, they will be coming down to start to, to lay their eggs in vernal pools, but a lot of people are starting to see them show up in their uh, swimming pools. Before you open your swimming pool, these guys will go down when there's no chlorine in there. They'll hop in when there's chlorine, which is not good for them. But there we go. That is a gray tree frog. If he leaps away, I'll, I'll catch him again. Don't worry about it. Um, they can leap from this height easily uh, and be perfectly fine when they land. See if I can get it to focus just on him. There we go. That's our gray tree frog. Now you can see that little pattern on its back. It looks gray. You see the bark of this tree? This is a, a model, it's not a real tree, of a white oak tree. It looks like he can blend right in with the white oak tree. Same color, the same pattern, really easy for him to camouflage. And they can change color. So when it starts to get cooler, they start to get darker. When it gets warmer, they will get lighter. So they can be almost a white, and then sometimes they turn almost pure black. Really good reason for that. What happens when the sun goes down? It gets cooler. So their temperature will make them turn darker. So they will blend in as it gets darker outside. And the reverse is true. As it gets warmer, they get lighter. As the sun comes up, they will get lighter. 
and be able to blend in with their surroundings. Now they do have, and I don't know if you're going to get to see it because there you go, some yellow under the legs. This one is, is uh, being a very good climber right now. So they're able to stick to anything. They could stick to glass. They could stick to my nose. Okay. Now, the, way, the reason that they're able to stick to anything is the pads on their feet have just the right amount of mucus. Too much would make it slippery. Too little, it wouldn't stick really well. So they can secrete just the right amount of mucus. They keep it right on. I told you it would jump away. They can keep it right on their toe and that's what allows them to stick. They can stick to just about anything. I see someone's asking if it's a boy or a girl and you can't really tell externally, but usually when you hold the boys, they chirp. So this one is chirping, so I'm gonna guess that this is a boy. <laughs> He's climbing all over the place. Now, the way they hunt, they will leap from the tree to whatever it is they wanna eat. They're eating mostly insects, and it's gonna be things that can fit in their mouths. All right, so they're not eating really large things. Uh, it has to be small enough to fit in their mouth. They can open their mouths pretty large so they can get some big things, but they will leap. When we feed them, we feed them crickets and they'll leap from one side of the tank to the other, grab that cricket and swallow it whole, very quick. They're very fast at it. They do use their tongues, so they will stick their tongue out right as they grab it. They're not like the cartoon frogs that shoot their tongues out. Uh, there are, you know, South American frogs that can do that. This one, it uses its tongue, but it really has to get close to um, the insect that it's eating. And it's primarily going to be insects. They might eat uh, a very small, maybe a tadpole or a, um, you know, another very small frog, maybe a, a small toad or something. But they are eating things that can fit in their mouths. And what we feed them are really just crickets. Um, okay, do we have any other question? Where do we find them? You know what, I have a few of them and I'm not sure where they came from, but I'll tell you some of the stories of where some of them came from. We had one that spent the winter in someone's houseplant. So they put their houseplant out on a porch and then they brought it in for the winter. And then around Christmas time, the frog started singing and they found it. So it had spent all winter up until about Christmas in the house plant and they gave it to us and we've taken care of it. I think it might be this one because this is our largest one and the, you know, the longer we have them, the bigger they're gonna get. So it may be that one. Another question I, I get is when it's stuck to my nose, uh, how it's able to do that and the way it's able to do that again is that mucus on those sticky pads. Um, but the other question is, do they go to the bathroom when they do that? And that has actually happened to me where they've been on my nose and gone to the bathroom in my mouth. The first time it happened was the first time I stuck one to my face. It was for a magazine. They were taking pictures of the Nature Center for, for a magazine article and it went right in my mouth. That's happened, uh, I guess, three or four times now. So they do, they squirt the, uh, it's like pee out and it can go pretty far. All right, do we have any other questions? How old are they? So they get about seven years old. Why does it sing? I love the questions. You guys are coming up with great questions. The reason frogs sing are the same reason that birds sing. They sing to alert one another if there's danger. They sing to attract a mate. They sing if they're happy and they have lots of food. So there are lots of reasons that they are singing why they sing. And it's to communicate with one another. Uh, another thing, these guys will lay up to a thousand eggs. So they can lay lots and lots of eggs. Uh, the tadpoles will stay or the eggs will hatch out in just a few days. It only takes four or five days for the eggs to hatch out. And then the tadpoles but not all of them are gonna get this big. There are lots of things that like to eat them. So they may get eaten 
um, but they're not all going to get to be seven years old. That would be a, a lucky frog. How big can they get? Great question. This is a really large one. So this is about as big as they get. Most of the time when you find them, they're going to be a bit smaller. And another thing about the color. So we talked about them going from black to white. They can also sometimes be green. And if you think of that, sometimes moss grows on the bark of a tree. They're able to blend in. So it's all about camouflage. You notice it's hiding. I showed you earlier the yellow on the underside of its leg. We'll see if we can get it to show you. There we go, a little yellow there. Uh, it, when it's sitting naturally, it's hiding that yellow. That yellow flash is only when it jumps away or when it shows its leg. So when they're um, uh, scared or fleeing, then they're going to flash their yellow. All right, what areas do you find them? Great question. Now, we talk about frogs living by ponds, and that's the thing most people think, okay, frogs live around water. This frog is only around water in the springtime. When they're going down to lay their eggs, they will be around water. The rest of the year, all summer long, it's going to be up in trees. So the primary place where these frogs live are high up in trees. We usually aren't able to catch them when they're way up in trees. We only find them in the springtime when they're down uh, by, the, by the ponds. How many survive out of a thousand? I don't know the exact percentage, how many survive, but we're going to say it's probably 10 to 20 percent. So that's a guess, but we can look that one up and see if we can answer that question for you. Where do they lay their eggs? In shallow water. Yes and yes. Great question. Shallow vernal pools. That's where they like to lay their eggs. Remember, there only have to be eggs for a few days and then tadpoles for a little while longer. So they can actually lay their eggs in a small pool that will dry up completely after springtime. And when I was in college, we had a wood frog. We found wood frog eggs in somebody's footprint in mud. But those frogs were able to hatch, uh, uh, metamorph from a uh, egg to a tadpole to a frog before that footprint completely dried up. So it's really cool that they're able to do that. Is the yellow a poison? So this is not a poisonous frog, but when it flashes that yellow, that warning could tell another animal. Typically bright colors do mean it's poisonous, so that might be trying to warn another animal, don't eat me, I'm poisonous, even though it's really not. What's the yellow for? It is a signal. So the yellow is a signal to let other frogs know where they are. They will signal each other with that and to tell other animals not to eat them. Oh, great question. Somebody wants to know if the mother frog takes care of the babies. Not at all. Once the frog lays its eggs, the thousand eggs are laid in, in the vernal pool or the small pond, the frog is going to go back up into trees and you're not going to see it take care of its young at all. So very, very good questions. Okay, again, if you missed any of our live videos and you can't find them on Facebook, you can go to our website, megspointnaturecenter.org. We have a virtual learning center. You'll be able to see our past videos. We have lists of vocabulary words right next to it, so you can find out some of the big words that I'm using. If I'm not defining them in a way that you can understand, you can look it up and find it right there. It'll be a great way for you to learn more about these animals. I'm only telling you small parts of what we do in a bigger program here at the Nature Center. So as soon as we're able to open the Nature Center, uh, you'll be able to come down and learn a lot more about these animals. But this is our way of continuing the education for all of you. Now, I really encourage you to like our Megs Point Nature Center Facebook page, follow us, that's a way that we can tell more people, more of your friends will get to see these videos and just the more and more people, the better. I also ask you to put a comment down there when you send a comment in. Um, put down where you're from. 
So we had somebody saying this frog in Michigan. Yes, these frogs can be found from Ontario and northern Maine all the way down south and across a little bit past the Mississippi. So all along uh, the eastern U.S. you're going to find uh, this frog. Okay. So, do they recognize their siblings? You know what? That's a good question. I did talk about it with some of the other animals that they have the ability to recognize siblings. I don't know about this one. And that's something that you should all keep in mind. People think that we know everything there is to know about a certain animal, but we really don't. There's a lot more to learn about all of the animals that we have here at the Nature Center. And the frog that we talked about before that recognizes its sibling, actually I think it was the crab that we talked about, but the animals that can recognize their siblings, uh, that's a really new research. That's something we just discovered. So all of you that are out there and you're looking at this saying, oh, I would love to research and learn more about them, but we already know all about it, you don't. We're gonna learn more about these frogs uh, as you guys get older, you're going to be the next scientist and you may find something out about this frog that nobody ever thought was possible. So I really encourage you, if you're in, interested in science and nature, you can become a researcher and find out more stuff. And then you can come and teach me because I always want to learn something new. Every day I'd like to learn something new. So keep the questions coming. Let's see if I have another one here. Are they endangered? Very good question. Lots of trees are being cut down, but right now in Connecticut, our tree habitat, our, our forest habitat is excellent. We have most of Connecticut is covered by forest, so that's a great thing for these frogs. The problem is that vernal pools and places where they want to lay their eggs, those are being filled in and destroyed. Now, we're not supposed to be doing it any longer. It still happens a little bit but we need to leave space around those pools so the frogs can get to the trees. So you can't just like have a, a lawn right up to a vernal pool and expect it to still be a functional vernal pool because they won't want to go that far from the trees. Amazing, it's the same color as behind. Yes, we, we talked about that. They just blends right in with the bark of a tree. Perfect camouflage if a tree, if you're living in a tree, then you should look like a tree. So this frog can look just like a tree. All right, I wanna thank you all again. A reminder that the MegsPointNatureCenter.org, our virtual learning center, will have these videos up on it. And this afternoon, we're gonna be going out into the environment to talk about something environmental, or we might do something in the Nature Center. If the weather turns bad, it might rain this afternoon. So we'll see what we're gonna do. Uh, this afternoon, but tune in at two o'clock. You'll get another live program. I love the questions and comments, so keep them coming. You can comment on this video even after it's posted, and I'll go back and look at them. I occasionally look through to see if there's any additional questions that I could answer for you. So I want to thank you all for tuning in today, and we'll see you this afternoon at two o'clock.